In this film we're going to look at converting Graham Varish's 08 diesel shunter to DCC. We'll be using the Lentz Silver Mini 10310. This is a fully NMRA compliant DCC decoder. It's a little thing, but the loco is a bit of a challenge because there isn't much room. Potentially there's room in the cab, but when you see one we open it, it, that's not quite so straightforward. To open the loco up, there are four screws underneath. Let me just... Grab a tray. Right. So there's two screws here at the back. And then there's two more screws at the front. Quite hard to see at this point, but they are in there. So you'll see a screw in here, one in there, and then one at the back, and one on the back of that side. Once the screws are loose, it's best to turn the loco over over a tray and just let them drop out because otherwise you'll be trying to find them in the carpet and as you can see they are tiny. There's one thing to note, there's a little wire here that joins the body and the chassis together so we need to get in under there and lift it out. Now the chassis and the body split. So the cab's a separate part and there's no route through to it. Um, the body's also metal so it's worth watching out for that as a potential short against the, against the decoder. I think there might be room down the side in here for a decoder. So we'll have a look at that. Apart from the small size, this is a relatively straightforward conversion. There's no lighting rig involved. So to reduce the amount of wiring that I'm messing around with, I'm going to remove the lighting common return, which is the blue from the decoder, and the white and yellow, which are head and tail light connections, because they're not needed in the loco at all. We'll leave the other wires relatively long for the moment until we work out how long they need to be. The worst thing I can do is to cut them too short. We'll be starting again. So the loco itself has quite a conventional layout. There's pickup from one side coming up from here, which goes up to here, which contacts the motor. And the other pickup from the other side is this brass strip that comes up and is held against the motor plate by this casting here. So when installing a decoder you do need to separate the pickup system from the motor contacts. Um, one side is relatively straightforward and I'll get the, the dreaded soldering iron in here. Probably not the best thing to do with the camera in the way. Take that side off, and then this side off. Now the other one is more problematic. You need to get in and cut this away. There we go. gently need to pull this copper strip forward. We need to keep it, it's part of the pickup system. So you've got the motor contact behind and we'll need to insulate between the two once we've soldered up some wires to it. Go too far and forget, we need to insulate the metal body in here. So I've got some black insulation tape. 
it's not going to be easy to do with the camera in the way. Right. There we go. The next job is to work out just where the wiring is going to go, um, and particularly with metal bodied locos, you want to avoid pinching the wires and obviously creating a short as you tighten the body back on. So we've got a black pickup goes to the back here. So we're going to be cutting it a little bit long. We can always trim it down. We can't extend it very easily. And the other wires I want to root up over the motor and then down to their relevant positions. So they're going to cut about here. So I've pre-tinned the wires, it'll hopefully mean that the solder flows quicker and even, more evenly. Um, it just means that you don't get quite so much heat soak into the, the points where you're soldering. And I'm actually using an extra flux, so I'm using multi-core solder as well as a flux. Um, usually by the time you get the, the multi-core to the job, it's already burnt off. Let's do a relatively easy one as a demo and then I'll solder the others. So the black wire is quite straightforward. Just going to solder away from the camera for the other bits. So the rest of the bits are now soldered on and what you can see is the orange motor contact goes to here. And obviously we've got a potential short here with this red pickup. The black pickup goes to the left hand side of the loco. The red goes to the right hand side wheels of the loco. And then the grey goes to this motor contact and the orange goes to this motor contact. So I've put a piece of heat shrink. And you can use black insulation tape. What I'm going to do is push this over and hopefully cover up this contact so that we're not going to have a short between the red and the orange. I'd like to check out all uh, decoder installations on a programming track so it's a safer place to find out if you've got the wiring right. Um, the programming track only sends small amounts of power to read and change the decoder. So I've got a lens system here, we're just going to have a look at CV30, which is the error reading on the decoder. What I'll do is I'll put a little bit of weight on the top of the loco, just to make sure it connects cleanly with the track. And we've come back with what we hoped for, which is no faults found. So the loco is ready to run. So you're just checking to see that there's no shorts between the chassis and the motor or shorts between the motor uh, the, the pickup system. Once you're happy with the installation you can put it on the main power. Some of the bodies are an incredibly tight fit so what I've done is reroute the wires down underneath the motor here and the black wire I've put up the top so it avoids this pinch point in the back of the body here. We're getting there. <laughs> so we're all back together. It has to be said, it's an incredibly tight fit in there. So I may be better to drill through and put the decoder in the cab area.
runs quite smoothly. I've just noticed right at the bottom end it's a little bit juddery. Now that's just to do with the type of motor that uh, Backman are using. So we're going to do a little bit of programming to sort that out. So you just see just a little bit of a judge and you can hear it right at the lowest speed steps to the programming track. What I'm going to do is change CV50 to motor type 4, so value 4. That allows me to change the pulse width modulation frequency in CV113 to cure the judder. So it's on 40, I'm going to drop it all the way down to 5. I found these values by fishing around and trying various things out, but this seems to work. Now on the test track, you see it's much smoother at low speed steps. Don't need to do it, but it just seems to make it much nicer. This is the other option where you drill a hole through into the cab and sight the decoder there. A lot more room, but a bit more of a fiddly install to do it. So there you are with the cab back on. Hides the decoder neatly. 